Right, hello everyone. Um, we're just going to go through a question on complex numbers here. So what I have on the board is Z1 and Z2. All right, this question is like uh, 2018 paper one, question two, complex numbers. The reason I'm doing complex numbers, it's a generally asked question on paper one, 25 marks. So I'm going to go through the key points that are commonly asked. We're going a bit old school today as well. Chalk, back to the chalkboard. Right, so Z1 equals minus three plus four I. Z2 equals minus one minus two I. Then also tell us in the question that I squared is equal to minus one. Right, part one, we're gonna figure out Z3, right? In the question they tell us that Z3 is equal to Z1 minus Z2, okay? So step one is the substituting. Instead of Z1, I'm putting in minus 3 plus 4i. Instead of Z2, I'm putting in minus 1 minus 2i. Okay, now, why did I put this in brackets? I put this in brackets because of this negative, this takeaway sign beforehand. Because on line 2, that will change. Minus 3 plus 4i. Minus by a minus, so that's going to change to positive 1. Minus minus, this is going to change to positive 2i. Okay? So that's a mistake that regularly made if I didn't have the brackets. Right, so now, final line, add my numbers, add my i's. Okay, what am I adding? Well, I have negative 3 plus 1. That's going to give me minus 2 or negative 2 plus 4i plus 2i, 4 plus 2 is 6, so I have 6i, all right? So my answer to that part is minus 2 plus 6i. All right, I'm just gonna write that up here for myself. My Z3 is equal to minus 2 plus 6i, because I'll need that from my next part, or later on in the song. Okay, I'll rub out that. So they're testing me there on adding and subtracting of complex numbers. We're still on the same part. Part two, they're going to ask me for this. Okay. Right. What is different? There's a little line over the Z1. That means the conjugate of Z1. Very simple. All we're doing is we're changing the sign of the imaginary part. So it stays as minus three as before minus 4i, okay? So, where students fall down, and this is the, is the don't understand or don't remember what does that mean. It's the conjugate, all we do is we change the sign of the imaginary part. Okay? So minus 3 plus 4i changes to minus 3 minus 4i. We'll be looking at the conjugate again later on in the sum when we're doing dividing. It's very important when we're doing dividing. Right, I'll rub out this bit. And the next part, part three of part A, is this, right. Okay. Now, I'm finding the modulus. Okay, so these lines here means the modulus. How far the point is from zero, zero. How far the point is from the origin, the origin being zero, zero. Okay, remember to the very first thing I did here, I found the answer to that. So I'm finding the modulus of minus two plus six i. Okay, so I've made my sum a little bit easier because I already knew this from part one. Now, a simple little formula that we need to know for this. It's the square root of a squared plus b squared, all right? So a is this part here, so it's my finger. In this case, it's minus two. So to get minus two squared plus b is the number in front, front of my imaginary bit. So b is six squared, okay? Now, we can calculate Separately, as in doing the minus 2 squared, we'll get 4 plus 6 squared. 6 squared is 36. 
or we could just put all this into our calculator and it will simplify it for us to 2 root 10. Okay, so basically what that is, 2 root 10, that is how far this point here is from 0, 0. How far Z3 is from 0, 0. So they could have asked this question like this. Find the modulus of Z3. Again, we're going back to what we've done with right. This is in third form. It's not going to be a whole number. So it's okay to get full marks to leave it like that. Right. Generally, that's probably part A done. I'd imagine a marking scheme, that's worth 10 marks. Okay, so the next part of the sum that we're going to do is investigate. All right, again, it's just another recap of working out my modulus. Investigate if the modulus of Z3 is equal to the modulus of Z1 plus the modulus of Z2. Okay, well, we know Z3, the modulus of Z3 from the last part, it is 2 the square root of 10. Okay, so we'll just hold on to that for a minute. And we're going to work out the modulus of minus 3 plus 4i plus the modulus of minus 1 minus 2i. Okay, so I get marks for substituting incorrectly. Next step is my formula, which is that I'm just going to do my formula over here. I'm running out of space. A squared plus B squared. So we've used that already in the previous part. So it's the square root of minus 3 squared plus 4 squared. Over here, again, the square root of minus 1 squared plus, still positive, brackets minus 2 squared. And we put into the calculator. Very important, my brackets here. Without my brackets, I would get different values, incorrect values, when I put it into my calculator. Okay, this means minus 2 multiplied by minus 2. Minus by minus is a positive, 2 by 2 is 4. So my answer will be 4. Okay, if we don't have brackets here, our calculator will give us the wrong answer. So key that we put this into our calculator correctly. Okay, I've done the calculator work already. When we do the calculator work here, we get 5. When we do our calculator work over here, we get the square root of 5, and that just stays as is. Again, in third form. Okay. Right. So 2 root 5 is not equal to 5 plus the square root of 5. Okay. So my question at the start, I've probably got 4 out of 5 marks here now. I need to just say a simple conclusion to get my full marks. Simple conclusion in this case would be that um, the modulus of Z3 is not equal to the modulus of Z1 plus Z2. Okay? So the question asked me to investigate. So just to recap, my conclusion at the end, these are not equal to each other. So the modulus of Z3 is not equal to the modulus of Z1 plus Z2. Okay? So just to stop where we are for a second. The first part of what we've done is we've added and subtracted complex numbers. In the second part we worked out the conjugate and now in the last part and here we've asked for the, um, the modulus. Okay. Generally when a complex numbers question is asked one or two of those parts are nearly always asked. So it's important that we know how to do all those three parts. Regularly asked that how far the point is from zero, zero, being able to work it out in an agile form. 
Right, so last part of this question is going to rub this out. Right, my final part is to find Z4. And they tell me in the question that Z4 is equal to Z1 over Z2. All right, this is the vibe. All right, again, very important. It's asked regularly. All right, year by year, you nearly see this is the part C of the question, right? And they say they want it written in the form of X plus Y I. All right, so that's the way they want the question at the end. Right, step one, subbing. Instead of saying one, I'm putting in minus three plus four i over z two minus one minus two. Remember when I said to you about the conjugate? Here we have it again. We multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. That's always the case. So minus 1 plus 2i on the top, on the bottom, minus 1 plus 2i. So my sum is staying balanced because I'm doing the very same to the top as I am to the bottom. And it's always whatever is on the bottom, we multiply by the conjugate. Remember back to part A, what we did in part A. Changing the sign of the imaginary part. It was negative, we change it positive. Notice minus 1 stays as minus 1. Right, so now we're going to multiply top by top. Minus 3 plus 4i multiplied by minus 1 plus 2i. Okay, and we're going to multiply that out. And like I was saying, on the bottom then, just if we go over here, I'll do my bottom part separately. And on the bottom I have minus 1, minus 2i. And that's going to be multiplied by minus 1 plus 2i. Okay? Right, back here, I'm going to stay over here for the time being and I'm going to work out my top part. Simplify it as best I can. I'm going to break it up like algebra minus 3 minus 1 plus 2i plus 4i multiplied by minus 1 plus 2i. Okay, multiplying out minus 3 by minus 1. Minus by a minus is a plus. 3 by 1 will give me 3. Minus by a positive is going to give me minus, going to give me a negative. 3 by 2 will give me 6. Don't forget it's not 2, it's 2i, so 3 by 2i gives me minus 6i. Again, minus by a positive. Okay, so it's going to give me a negative value again. 4 by 1 is 4. 4i is what we're multiplying, so it's going to give me minus 4i. And finally, two positive numbers. 4 by 2 is going to give me 8. And i by i will give me i squared. Okay, so now we'll add, subtract what we can. Right, the only number I have at the moment is 3. Minus 6 minus 4i. So minus 6i minus 4i will give me minus 10i. Now, plus 8. Remember back to the very start of the question. I have a little box over there. They will tell us this in the question i squared equals minus 1. Generally they tell us that in the question. We should know it from complex numbers anyway. Instead of i squared, I'm putting in minus 1. Okay? 
So I have 3, this is going to change to minus 8. So 3 minus 8 in total will give me minus 5, minus 10i. Right? So there's my answer to the top. Okay? Again, yeah, sorry about the space, just kind of run out of space on the board. Right, so that's the top. Let's go over and do the very same thing with the bottom. Break up my brackets, multiply out, and sub in. Right, so breaking up my brackets first, minus 1, minus 1, plus 2i. Basically, that minus 1 has been multiplied by all this. Minus 2i multiplied by minus 1 plus 2i again. Okay. Probably something I didn't mention, just our brackets are the same over here, and again our brackets are the same over here. So maybe just check that to make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. Multiplying out, minus by minus is positive, 1 by 1 is 1. Minus 1 multiplied by 2i will give me minus 2i. Minus 2i by minus 1. Minus by minus is positive, so it'll be 2. I'm uh, sorry, uh, plus then 2 by 1 gives me 2. <clears throat> Don't forget, it's 2i by 1, so it's plus 2i. And finally, last part, minus 2i by plus 2i. Minus by positive, minus. 2 multiplied by 2, 4 i multiplied by i is i squared, alright? i squared again, but we're told the start of question is minus 1. Again, like I did previously, I have 1. The whole reason we do this, the whole reason we're multiplying out by the conjugate of the bottom is for this to happen. Minus 2i plus 2i is 0. My aim was to get rid of all the i's on the bottom. I have done that now. Because minus 4 brackets minus 1. i squared to minus 1. And that will give me 5. Alright? So my aim was to no longer have i's on the bottom. I have now achieved that. Alright, so just to recap back here. I multiplied out. Minus 2i plus 2i is 0. So all my i's are gone. i squared was still in the question at this point. I changed it to minus 1. Calculate it to give me an answer of 5. So 1 minus 4 minus 1. Minus by minus is a plus. 4 by 1 is 4. And 1 plus 4 we all know is 5. Okay, so I have my top. And I have my bottom. Now, I'm not completely finished. At this stage, I imagine I've got probably 7 out of 10. Alright, so a lot of the work is done. Okay, what I'm going to do is just rub out the start of the question up here, just so I can finish my question. I'm going to leave that because remember that's in the question, that's the way they wanted the sum to be at the very end. Okay, so remember when I worked out my top, I got minus 5, minus 10, I, on the bottom I got 5, right? By doing that, generally I got 8 out of 10. Put it back together. Now, I need to write it like this, okay? I need to get rid of the fraction altogether. How many times does 5 go into minus 5? It goes in minus 1 times. How many times does 5 go into minus 10i? It goes in minus 2i times. That is my answer. Minus 1 being my x part, my y part being um, minus 2. They could have asked right in the form of a plus b i b. Alright? It's just the very same thing, only different letters. They're using A instead of X, B instead of Y. Okay, so don't let something like that complicate you. 
right? Basically, all they want is written in this form. A number, and in some cases it may be a fraction, but still just writing in the fraction here and over here. If that was the case, if, if that was the case for your question. You know. Okay? This is very important. It's regularly asked. The reason it's regularly asked is because it, it allows the examiner to see do you know how to multiply? Do you know how to conjugate? Do you know how to add and subtract? Do you know how about subbing for minus one? And do you know how to divide in the end? So that's a reason that it's very important and it's, it's regularly asked. If you go back to the last few exam papers, it is regularly asked. Okay, so if you were to go now and do question uh, two, yeah, question two in 2018, paper one, you should be able to do that question based on going through this question step by step. Okay, so what I did was I picked a question, my own question, that was similar to that question but it's um, only changing the numbers, all right? So just to recap, part A, we add and subtract it, we found the, con or we found the conjugate and we found the modulus. Part B, we did some investigation, as in it was something equal to something, and we found out it wasn't. And part C, the question um, was to do dividing, okay? That would be fairly sort of 25 mark question, you should be spending about 10, maybe 12 minutes max on that in an exam. Bearing in mind, you're gonna have six 25 mark questions. In general, if you spend 10, 12 minutes max at each of those questions, you have an hour plus done on your test. So you've got obviously around an hour, 10 minutes done. Shouldn't be spending any more than that on your section A, your short questions, because remember you have a section B, which is also worth 150 marks, three questions. Okay, thank you for listening. What I'll just do before we finish up is I'll just zoom in, just so you can see uh, the question that I have. All right, so basically there is just the question that I did out. Part A, part B, investigate, and part C, find Z4, which is equal to Z1 over Z2. Write Z4 in the form of X plus YI, where X and Y are elements of R, okay? So, elements of R means that they're real numbers. So again, we don't need to worry ourselves too much with that, just that real numbers are any number on the number line. Yes, that is any number, it's minus one, minus two, yes, that is also any number. Okay, thank you for listening, and I hope you got something valuable out of that. Thank you. Hi everyone. So we're going to look at some algebra questions. Algebra, as we know, is an important topic on paper one. It can also come up and be examined in paper two in different areas and topics as well. I'm just going to focus on some questions that are regularly asked in paper one. All right, so the first question I'm going to do is solve the equation. I'm just going to bring it down just to show you that question itself. Okay, so if you can see there, uh, question one, solve the equation 3x squared minus 9x minus 4 equals 0. Now, the next part is key. Give each answer correct to two decimal places. Okay, so this question is like um, 2018, paper one, question three. Okay, so give each question to two decimal places. All right, that should set alarm bells off there's only one method that I can use to solve this question. All right, that method being the minus b formula. All right, so at this point, if you're in your state exam, if you haven't already done so, you would put up your hand and you'll ask for a set of log tables. All right, you're gonna to need to find the minus b formula. Okay, so as many students know, the minus b formula is on the cover. However, if we go to page 20, so again, just to show you this, Page 20 in our log tables, the very top of the page, it says algebra is our minus b formulas here and here. The roots, just how it's written, very similar to how it's written up there. Okay. Right, let's set about solving this question now. Okay. So, first and foremost, with my log tables, I write my formula. Minus b 
plus or minus the square root of b squared b squared minus 4 ac all divided by 2a okay now it's important for us to do this just so we don't make any mistakes and we do get marks for it so please don't skip this part write out over here what a is a is the number in front of x squared so a is 3 b is the number in front of x so b is minus 9 be careful now that it is minus 9 to the right and not just 9 and c is then the number on its own minus 4 one more letter I need to know, I need to know minus b well if b is minus 9 minus b is going to be minus minus is going to be plus 9 right after I've that done, I'm going to sub my numbers in for my letters. Minus b is 9, so I have 9 plus or minus. So the plus and the minus means I have two sums. One when the sum is plus, one when the sum is minus. The square root of b squared, so look at, I put brackets around my minus 9 because I have to square it. Minus 4 brackets a is 3 back bracket c is minus 4 all over 2 brackets a 2 brackets 3 right so from here it's calculated work right so just to recap give my answer correct at two decimal places, so that means I must use my minus b formula, especially because it's equal to zero. So, wrote out my formula from the log tables, identified what a, b, and c was, subbed in my values, I'm now going to get my calculator and actually do out this work. Okay, so what I might do is I might bring down my calculator just in front of the camera here, just so we can see it. Right, so the first button that I'm going to press is this button here, the fraction button, okay, and it comes up. So on the top I have 9 plus the square root of brackets minus 9 squared minus 4 brackets 3 brackets minus 4. Arrow to bring it down to the bottom, right, I'm down at the bottom now. 2 brackets 3. Okay, press equals. Now look at the way it comes up. This is not the way that I want my answer, but if I press my SD button, it will change it to the way I do want my answer. Alright. Now you can do this in stages as in work out minus 9 squared to the 81 and so on. You can, but to save time in the exam, go straight from this point to this point. It's a student's preference if they want to work it out stage by stage. Personally, I prefer to go from there to the answer. So x equals, on my calculator, 3.39. 2. Right, so that's three decimal places. So 3.3 is this five or more? No, it's not. It's less than 5, so the 9 stays the same. So it stays as 3 now. Okay, just get my calculator. I'm not going to delete any of my numbers. If we do, that's okay. We just put the numbers back in again. However, I'm just going back, and instead of the plus, I'm deleting it and putting in minus. Equals, again, it will come up with my third form. Press my SD button. X equals minus 0 0.392 so again I've gone to three decimal places like this one over here 2 is not 5 or bigger so it's going to stay as minus 0 0.39 ok you will use the minus b formula definitely at some point or you should use it at some point in your even circuit exam 
Okay, so this is an important formula, important algebra formula. All right. So like I said, you can practice this sum in the 2018 paper one question three. Okay, thank you. Right, so the next algebra question we're going to do, and um, this question is like a question on uh, 2017 paper one, question four. Right, the question is solve for x. All right, and the question is 6x minus four brackets 2x plus 3 equals 2 brackets 4 minus x plus 5x. Okay. Right, so that's the question. Now let's try and multiply this out first of all. Um, yes, so we'll multiply it out first of all and we take it from there. So 6x, I'm not going to do anything with that at the moment, so it's still 6x. Now, brackets mean multiply, so I'm going to multiply minus 4 by 2x. It's going to give me minus 8x, minus 4 by 3 will give me minus 12. Equals, over on the other side then, 2 by 4 is 8, 2 by minus x will give me minus 2x plus 5x. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get the x's to one side, numbers to the other side. If you want, you could add and subtract at this point, as in these and these, or we can just bring everything and then subtract and add at the end. I'm going to just bring everything over. So, what I'm going to do is I'm arranging my sum. So, 6x minus 8x. Neither of those have moved. So they're staying the same, exactly the same, it's positive, this is negative. Now, this is a negative 2x, it's minus. I'm going to bring it across the equals, so it must change. So it changes to plus 2x. This is a positive 5, when it comes across it must change sign. When I mean it comes across, it moves from one side of the equals to the other side of the equals. It's on the right hand side of the equals. It's moving over to the left hand side. It's changing to minus 5x. Numbers then, I have 8. It hasn't moved, so it's going to stay still positive 8. And this negative 12 has to come over here. Changes to plus 12. Okay, so now you can add them all up or we can get our calculator, maybe just ensure that we're not going to make any mistakes and put this into our calculator. So we have 6 minus 8 plus 2 minus 5 equals minus 5. So it's minus 5x over on this side. Again, if we need our calculator, just to double check, especially in a pressurized exam scenario, use it. It's, that's what is there to help you. 8 plus 12 gives me 20. Okay, so 5 minus 5 multiplied by x is equal to 20. Remember back to the question, solve for x. We're nearly there. Right, so these are being multiplied, so the opposite is divide. So I'm going to divide this by minus 5, and I'm going to divide this by minus 5. They cancel, give me x. Again, if you need to use your calculator, please do. X is equal to how many times does minus 5 go into 20? It goes minus 4 times. So X is equal to minus 4. Okay, so like I said, it's a, a short question in paper 1. Alright, so section A. Probably worth 10 marks. Generally speaking, in the marking scheme, this will be worth 10 marks. Alright, what are they examining? 
that you're able to multiply out in algebra, that you're able to rearrange the sum, you're able to add our x's in this case, add our numbers and finally simplify it down. Okay? So we need to put it in step by step, try and not skip any steps with that one. Alright? We'll do another one of those questions, okay? Okay, so I'm going to do another solve for x question. This time it's very similar to a question um, in 2016, paper 1, a question 3. Alright, so again an algebra question. They're examining very similar to the last question, 4 brackets x minus 5 plus 3 brackets x minus 2 equals 21. All right. They haven't added a little bit of information in here for us. All that means is x is an element of r, x is a real number. So x can be any number. It can be positive, negative, it can be a decimal, it can be a whole number, it can be a fraction. Right, so step one, like the last time, is to multiply up. 4 by x, 4x, 4 by minus 5, minus 10. 3 by x will give me 3x. 3 by minus 2 will give me minus 6 equals 21. Okay, so like the last question, I move my x is to one side, my numbers to the other side of the equals. Here's a little bit nicer, I don't have any x's to move, so I just still have 4x plus 3x. It's still the same because it hasn't gone anywhere. Equals 21, that still hasn't moved. Now, I need to move these was minus 20, remember like the last sum will become plus 20. Was minus 6 comes across will become plus 6. Now, let's add. In this case there was no negative number, so again that makes it a little bit easier for myself. 4x plus 3x, 4 plus 3, 7x. 21 plus 20 gives me 41, plus another 6 gives me 47. Remember the last sum when I was dividing by minus 5? This time I'm dividing by 7. Okay. x equals 47 or 7. Now I put that into my calculator. It's, it's not a whole number. 7 doesn't go even into 47. Okay. So I can leave my answer like this. Remember back to what they told me at the start. They said it was a real number. This is a real number. Okay, it, it's a fraction form, so I can leave it like that. You can change it to a decimal if you want. They didn't stipulate that in the question, so I'm happy enough to leave it like that in order to get my full marks. Okay, so what we might look at next is a simultaneous equation. Okay, so this is a simultaneous equation. Again, it's like 2016, paper one, question three. Right, so the question is, solve the, equa the equations, there's two equations, below to find the value of A and the value of B. So I need to figure out what A is and what B is. Okay, step one. The first line is okay, A plus B equals. The second line, however, I need to move it around because I have A on one side of the equals and B on the other side. 
it's not similar to the setup of my first line. So I'm going to leave my first line alone. Three A minus five B equals fourteen. So what I did there, like we spoke about previous, it's gone from one side it equals to the other, so it's gone from positive to negative. Now, right, I need to get rid of something. Either I need to get rid of my A's or I need to get rid of my B's. It's impossible to solve a sum with two unknowns. I don't know this, I don't know this. I see that this is positive and this is negative, so I'm going to look at getting rid of my A's, or my, sorry, my B's. Right? So at the top line, how can I make the numbers the same in front of my B's? Right, well, 4 and 5, they're multiples of 20. So if I multiply the top line by 5, that will give me 20B. If I multiply the bottom line by 4, that will give me minus 20B. The numbers will be the same. One will be positive, one will be negative. They'll give me an answer of 0. I'll have gotten rid of my B's. Okay? So that's my aim, to get rid of B's. I can then work out A. Right. Now, multiplying by 5 means I have to do it to every single thing. Okay, 5 by 2a gives me 10a, 5 by 4b will give me 20b, 5 by 2 will give me 10. On the bottom line, 4 by 3a is 12a, 4 by minus 5b will give me minus 20b, 4 by 14. Okay. So 4 by 10 is 40, 4 by 4 is 16, so it will give me 56 in total, 40 plus 16, 56. Okay, the whole reason I've done this is to get rid of my Bs. Well, we'll just, we're bringing these two lines together. So 10A plus 12A gives me 22. A. 20B minus 20, 0. Yes, I've got rid of my Bs. No longer have Bs. Equals 10 plus 56 will give me in total 66. And like we've done in a few occasions now at this stage, I need to get A, so I'm going to divide by 22. A equals 3. Okay, I have got A, so I got more than half marks at this stage. I've the hard work done. Now I know that A is 3, I can sub this in to any one of my lines to find B. I'm going to pick the top line. It doesn't matter if you pick the second line either, either whichever works. Bottom will work, so whichever works for you. 2, a instead of A, it's now 3. Plus 5B, or sorry, 4B equals 2. 2 by 3 is 6, so 6 plus 4B equals 2. Now, again, I need to bring this across. Letters on one side, so 4b is staying where it is, equals 2, that's staying where it is, was a positive, now it's minus 6. So 4b equals minus 4, 2 minus 6 is minus 4, and I need to divide by 4, because I need to get b, b equals minus 1. Okay, so I have my A, which is 3, my B, which is minus 1. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Those are four questions then on algebra, similar to questions that have been asked over the last few years. All right, you will need, even if you're not asked those directly, you will, will need to know how to use those key skills throughout your exam in terms of say multiplying, in terms of our dividing, in terms of moving, 
and from one side to the other. Okay, thank you for listening. Hi everyone, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a few topics on paper two. In particular, what we're going to look at is the line coordinate geometry and the circle. All right? Generally, they're two short questions, as in two 25 mark questions on paper two. And generally, there's a good lap over between the two questions, that's why I'm going to do these two topics together. Before we ever go about answering these questions, ensure we have our log tables. Okay, so if they're not on your desk, put your hand up and get a copy of these during the state exam. All right, so where do we look? We go to page 18 and 19 on our log tables. All right, so I'm just going to bring you down to show you. Okay, so page 18 is this page here. All right, a few formulas there we're going to be using there today. Page 19, just if you look, this is the important one, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, given center hk radius r. All right, that is the only formula on page 19 that we'll be using, okay? So it's the only formula that can be asked, it will always be asked, you will either be asked to use it or it will be given to you and you have to take information from it. So it's an important formula to know. Obviously it will be in your log tables, but to know how to actually use it. It will always be asked in paper two. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna look at a mock question. All right, just to bring you down, just to show you, this is from the 2018 mock paper. All right, so just, there's the key thing. What does the question say? The circle has a radius of five centimeters and touches both the x-axis and the y-axis as shown. Write down the coordinates of the center, hence find the equation of C. Okay, so they called C the circle. Okay, so C is our circle, right? So find the equation of C. So straight away, this formula I just spoke about you a second ago, we're going to use. And that's the first thing I'm going to write up x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Right. So that's my formula. Page 19 of the log text. Now the tallest in the formula, center is hk, radius is uh, r. Right, from back to my question, I know straight away that my radius is 5. Okay, so I have that. Now, remember what I showed you. It said in the question, touches both the x-axis and the y-axis. So, my x-axis going this way, my y-axis going this way. Well, if it touches both this line and this line, okay, so there's roughly drawn, right? It has to be out five and up five to my center, all right? So I figured out my center, is 5, 5. All right, that's most of my work done. X is still X because it's an equation, there's gonna be X and Y in my answer. Minus five squared plus Y minus five squared equals R squared, which equals five squared. Right. Nearly there now, okay. Last line, I'm not going to do anything over here. It stays the same, we don't have to multiply that out. So x minus 5 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 5 squared gives me 25. Right. And that is my answer. All right. So all I did was wrote my formula subbed in my values for h and k, my center, subbed in my value for r, which my radius, and worked out my radius squared, five squared gives me 20. Five marks. Now, the next part of this question, verify using algebra that the point P, and they give us what the point P is, nine comma eight is on C. All right, so I'll just bring you down just to show you that. Um, verify, using algebra the point 9, 8 is on C. So that it's on this circle. Right, well I know the circle, so I'm gonna just continue with part two. Point P is 9, 8, right? 
9 is my x value, so instead of x it's going to be 9. 9 minus 5 squared plus my y value is 8. 8 minus 5 squared equals 25. So using algebra, all I'm doing is subbing in and solving. 9 minus 5 squared. Right, 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 squared will give me 16. Again, don't be afraid to use your calculator. Um, 8 minus 5 squared, well 8 minus 5 is 3, 3 squared is 9. I need to get an answer of 25. 16 plus 9, yes. 25 equals 25. Okay, that is my answer. Again, five mark. Well, I haven't got my five full marks got yet. I need to just state it. says using our verify. So just state at the end yes, point P is on the circle. Or something like that. Point P is on C. Alright? Okay, so just to recap, I can't force it enough. This important. This form is very important, always asked, we will always have to use this, okay? So then my values, got my answer for my equation of a circle, and then part two of that question, point 0.98 is on the circle. We have to verify this, so we put in the points, 25, the left hand side equals the right hand side, 25 equals 25, so yes, it's on the circle, all right? Now, I'm going to look at part B to this question. So, just rub out everything I have for the moment. Again, this part B, it's regularly asked. Alright, so it's important as well. So that's why I decided to do this question. Alright. And um, if you look through your exam papers, you will see similar questions to it. I'll just print it down, just so you can see the question, rather than me writing it up. So find the equation of t, the tangent to c at p. <clears throat> right. First thing I'm going to ask myself, what is a tangent? Okay, well, rather than get into deep things of it, a tangent is a line. So find the equation of a tangent, find the equation of a line, I have a formula for that. In my log tables, this formula as well is regularly asked, whether it's asked in the circle part of a question or it's asked in the line part of a question. The formula that I'm going to use is y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Okay? Again, like I just said a second ago about the circle equation formula, it's a formula used a lot. Let's try and not get these mixed up. Now, so that's my formula, right? And they told me, remember, p was 9, 8. Right, so y minus 8 equals m x minus 9. Okay. Lovely. Got marks, got for this. However, I can't go any further here because I don't know m, I don't know my slope. How am I going to find my slope? Back to the question. It says the tangent to C at P. Well, I know, remember, I know C. I know the center of it is 5, 5, and I have my point P. So I'm going to find my slope over here. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Again, where did I get that formula from? Back to these log tables again. Page 18 we're on at the moment. Okay, so let's sub in my points. Right, so remember 5, 5, 9, 8 are the two points. Right, y2 is 8 minus 5 over 9 minus 5. Calculate or work for this, it will give me an answer of 3 quarters. Okay. Just if I was to just do a little sketch of this, so this is my circle, I got say this point and this point. So I got the slope of that line there. Right? It's three quarters. However, 
this is a tangent so this is this line here all right it's perpendicular it means at a 90 degree angle touching in just this point here point p so i need to find a perpendicular slope when i have this slope to find a perpendicular slope change the sign number one if it's positive it's going to be negative flip it upside down it was 3 over 4, so now it's going to be 4 over 3. Right. I can bring that information back up here to this sum to finish out this sum. So y minus 8 equals minus 4 over 3 x minus 9. Right, so the 3 is on the bottom. I'm going to bring it across and multiply. 3 brackets y minus 8 equals minus 4x minus 9. Okay, now maybe I did that a little bit quickly, so I'll just talk through that again. The 3 here at present is dividing, so I'm going to bring it across and multiply. Right? So basically I'm breaking my fraction up. Now let's multiply out. Alright, 3 by y. 3y, 3 by minus 8 gives me minus 24 equals minus 4x, minus 4x, minus by minus is plus, 4 by 9 gives me 36. Okay, so I'm nearly there, I've got all my multiplying done, and now I just need to move my sum around. So it is negative here. Remember when we bring it across, we've done it a few times this stage, we become positive. So 4x plus 3y. Now it doesn't it didn't stipulate in this in the question, so I can move my numbers to either side. I'm gonna make them positive, so I'm gonna bring it across. Equals 36. It was a minus 24, so now it's gonna become plus 24. So 4x plus 3y equals 36 plus 24 will give me 16. And that's my answer. All right, so remember the equation of a circle, we had x and y in it. Again, look at our equation of a line, it has an x and a y in our answer as well. All right, so just to recap, we got our equation of a line formula. We solved in the points x1, y1. Over then we had to do our slope. Once we found our slope, we had to get the perpendicular slope and we brought that back into our slope. Right. So again, it's a key formula. If you look back through your exam papers, paper two, it's asked over and over again. Okay, so what I've written on the board here now is the equation of a circle. So they've given us that in the question. This is like a question from a mock paper in 2017. Again, if we look through our papers, it's asked regularly as well. So sometimes, as I said already, we use the equation of a circle formula. Here we're given it and we have to work out the radius and the center from that. All right, so just if we see the way the question would be asked. So... The circle C1 has an equation, as I've just written on the board. Write down the coordinates of the center and the radius. Right, remember, I might just actually even write up just again quickly. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. 
right? X, X, minus, minus. Remember, our H is our center. So my center is 1. Y, Y, minus, minus, 1. Okay, so 1, 1 is my center. R squared is my radius. I'm sorry, R is my radius. So I need R. R squared is 25. So I need to get the square root of 25. So my radius is 5. All right. So again, probably a five mark question. I've got my center and I've got my radius. Okay. Now what they're asking me is, I'm going to leave that up there. What they're going to ask me is the point five three. This point five three. Is this on this circle, inside or outside? And I have to use algebra. If the question asks, justify your answer using algebra. Right. It's not too complicated with algebra. This is my x. This is my y. So instead of x, I'm putting in 5. 5 minus 1 squared plus instead of y, 3 is going in. 3 minus 1 squared equals 25. Right. 5 minus 1. 4, 4 squared is 16, plus 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. 16 plus 4, so 16 plus 4 is 20, 20 is equal to 25. Well, obviously it's not, 20 is not equal to 25, so I'll just put that line in there, it's not equal to 25. Right, so the question, remember the question? Does the point lie inside or outside the circle, or is it on the circle? Well, it's not on the circle, because if it would be on the circle, 25 would be equal to 25. If this number was bigger, it'd be outside. It's smaller, so because it's smaller, it means that it's inside the circle. So, again, we need to state a conclusion. Remember back to saying earlier, yes, the point is on the circle. Here, we have to say, We'll just say something like 20 is smaller than 25, so point is inside, inside the circle. Okay. Now, I'd, I'd always be of the opinion that we state something, even if they, say, even if they don't say justify your conclusion or verify. Always put in a little bit to explain how you got your answer, just in case. All right? Generally, it helps. It shows that you understand what you've just done. Okay. So basically, just to recap there, we had an equation and we put our values in for x and y. Okay, so I'm going to stick with my equation of a circle for one more minute. Right, and I'm going to, the question this time is, center is zero, zero, and a point on circle is 2, 2. Okay. Right. So they're asking me for the equation of the circle. Right. So look at, um, let, let me write down the formula. I get marks for that. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Again, where did I get that formula? Page 19, log tables. Now, lovely, I have my center, 0, 0. So, sure, let's, let's put that in. X minus 0 squared plus Y minus 0 squared equals. Now, here's my problem. I don't have my radius. Right, 
but I do know that my radius would be, well there's my centre, my radius would be the centre to the outside of the circle. So my radius is from the centre to the outside, so from there to there. So how long is it from there to there? Okay, how long is it from one point to another? Again, like I said, this is why the line and the circle so much interact. I am going back to page 18 in my log tables, the distance formula, the length from one point to the other. All right, so we're back to page 18, the formula we haven't used yet today. Okay, so the formula we're going to use is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Right, so it's the square root x2, so we'll say x1, y1, then obviously x2, y2, x, y, x, y, always that way, x, then y. Right, so x2 is 2 minus 0 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared. I'd encourage you at this stage to get your calculator and we put this all into our calculator to get an answer of the square root of 8. Alright, so now I have my radius. I can go back over to where I was earlier on. Right, so where was I earlier on? I'll just write it up again. x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals my radius squared. Square root of 8, and put that in brackets, to be squared. One last line, and then I'm done. 0 squared is 0, so when it's 0, I'm just going to change this to x squared. When it's 0, I'm just going to change it to y squared. So I'm getting rid of the 0, I'm just becoming y squared equals the square root of 8 squared. Our answer is just 8. So the equation of this circle, x squared plus y squared equals 8. So just to recap, the question was asking me my centre, 0, 0, and a point of the circle. Okay? So just basically what I've shown there is the different ways that we've used this equation of the circle formula. Alright? Here is different to the other two ways that we've used it, but it's still the same formula, it's still we need our centre and our radius. Anytime that we're using this formula, we need our centre, we need our radius and the various ways that we need to bring in the distance formula and so on with that. Okay, thank you for listening and I hope you got something from that.